Well, let's go back a little bit. You know, Eddie uh, talked at the top when he did his intro about the sniper, and you had a, a bit part in that. But did you meet Stanley at all during that thing? Or no, I'm just a bit part. He's not going to interview me for that. No, um, but I mean, did, he wasn't on the set. Or no, he wasn't. Like that. He was not on the set. No, yeah, okay. I worked with Eddie Dimitri. Right. Anyway, I said I didn't know that I did that with Stanley, mm -hmm. but it really was fate in a way because it was my first little introduction to film. Right. And then I ended up marrying him and being married 35 years. Yeah. And so, where did you and Stanley meet? When did that happen? How much time do you have for that one? Well, I was working with Jerry Lewis on a film called The Disorderly Orderly. Oh, yes, I remember. I opposite him. And uh, Mr. Lewis is another one who never liked to rehearse. And luckily, I'd done an awful lot of theater and a lot of live television when, when television was live live. Well, yes. I, I think you worked with Adam and Costello, so that no, probably was a, a preparatory school for Jerry Lewis. It was. Well, uh, uh, I worked opposite Lou Costello, mm -hmm. mainly. And, right. uh, oh God, he was such a sweetheart. And he mm -hmm. was so particular and such a, a real artist. He really cared. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Abbott didn't really care that much. He would not have sit in the chair and have yawn, but Lou was in working every minute. And right. I loved working with him. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful time. We wanted to work together again mm -hmm. after that little uh, television series I, that I did with him, but it never worked out. But right. anyway, I was working with Jerry, and um, he didn't like to rehearse either, and luckily the first take was the one they printed, and it was like making it up as you went along, sort of, you know, right, right. with him. And uh, when I go to the commissary every day at lunch, over at the left side of the commissary was this long table, were all these phenomenal people, like Simone Signore and Oscar Werner and Lee Marvin and Jose Greco, and you name them, mm -hmm. they were there. And then all of a sudden, the doors would open and in would come Vivian Lee with her entourage and her scarves and her whole thing. I think I spent the whole lunch watching that table. And I would see the head of the table, and I think, oh, that was, um, that's, uh, what's his name, the producer and director? <laughs> I didn't know it was Stanley. Anyway, I said, it's an interesting table. Anyway, I got enough courage to go visit that set one day when I finished my scene with Jerry and uh, at Paramount. And they had the whole bloody ship. I'm telling you, the whole bloody ship. The film was Ship of Fools, okay? Right. And the whole bloody ship. It was a wonderful film. Thank you. I think it was great, too. That was Vivian's last film. Vivian's last film, yeah. And Oscar Werner was really introduced to the American audience. That's right. In that film, and he was so great. Anyway, they had the whole bloody ship there. And I'm standing there with my mouth open because Vivian Lee was like, to me, was the epitome of what any of us would desire to be. Her, her work as an actress and her beauty and everything. Anyway, she was a rehearsing on the ship. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice saying, Who is that? And I'm thinking, I'm looking at these. It's that, it's that director, that, that producer, what's his name? And he doesn't like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be here. Because I was on a, a, a set that was closed, you know. And some makeup artist, I guess I'd worked with him, with, and said, It's Karen Sharp, blah, blah, blah. And he said, okay, you can stay. And I said, thank you, you know. Thinking, who, who was that guy? And I, and I wasn't sure. I was never interested in what everybody else was doing. Just what I was doing on my, on my set, you know? Right. Anyway, so I stayed a few seconds and I left. I felt embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So a few days later, I'm walking to the commissary. This makeup artist came over right. to me. He said, Karen, he said, why didn't you stick around? He said, Stanley Kramer won. I said, that's who, Stanley Kramer. He said, Stanley Kramer wanted to meet you. And I said, well, why isn't this film cast? And he said, well, I don't know if that's what he had in mind. And I said, oh, <laughs> get out of here. I, don't, I never take those guys. Stanley was casting a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it took him a year to get a date. I um, kept calling my manager and said, get me out of this because, you know, I don't, I don't date people in the industry because I never can work with them. I just like to keep them at arm's length and do my work. I don't get involved with people in the industry. Anyway, it took him nine months. And finally, we had he called me and I said, Mr. Kramer, I'm working. I never go out. He says, it's been a year. I said, I know. I'm always working. It's been a year. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll meet you for dinner at the Tail of the Cock. Tail of the Cock was in the valley at the time and in Beverly Hills. He said, you, you, you live in the valley? And I said... The wrong side of the hill. I said, yes, you have a problem with that? Because I don't need that dinner that badly. And he said, no, no, I'll be there. 
<laughs> so I spent the whole day looking at my watch. And I said, I can only give you two hours, but I have to work tomorrow morning. Oh, eight o'clock, gotta go. And up I went and thought, God, I'm never gonna work for this man. So my manager came to visit me on the set a couple of days later and he said, how did that go? I said, I'm never gonna work for that man because I told you, don't get me involved, you know? Anyway, Stan and I were married nine months later and we're married 35 years. <laughs> Great. And he taught me how to produce and that's really kind of what I'm trying to do today and has had some success. And what are you doing now currently with the Stanley Kramer Library, uh, his films, and keeping the memory of, of one of the great filmmakers of all time? Well, thank you. I, I agree with you. He is. He was. And, uh, well, I do try to keep his legacy alive, yes. And the Stanley Kramer Library is really about the films that Stanley made and some of the ones that I own in remake. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the process of remaking High Noon. And uh, I want to do it a little bit differently, of course, I don't do exactly the same, but uh, I'm in negotiations for that. Wonderful. Well, uh, Karen, I think it was great that you came here tonight. Uh, I think this movie was terrific. It was great seeing you, seeing Hugo, and seeing Cleo, and thank you so much for coming. It's my it pleasure. It's been wonderful. Put it together for Karen Star Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Ten minutes of your vision and then to come on. Thank you so much for coming tonight.